What I always try to get is motion or emotion in something that is still. And because there's such basic forms, on one level it would look kind of pop arty, but on the other level, hopefully you can see it move. And I feel like art should and can move you. And in this case, I'm taking that idea of move and making it physical. I'm upstairs at the R. Michelson Gallery on Main Street in Northampton. In the vault, you can see when you walk in the door that it is a Herring Hall Marvin Safe Company vault room that we are in. And I'm here with Northampton's own, internationally known, Kennedy Center education artist in residence, Mo Willems. This is a series of abstractions, and the show is called Gravity and other thoughts. Somebody said, oh, you're making these because you have so many balls in the air. You're always juggling a whole bunch of things. And I was like, oh yeah, maybe that's why. And now, because of what's happening in the world, I realize the Gravity Show is a reminder there are forces you cannot stop. Gravity is certainly one of them. It's interesting that somebody thought that it was gravity because of all the balls you have in the air, because a lot of the images here do contain spheres, circles that could be perceived as balls, including ones like these ones look like they're rolling down a hill and then swooping up in that motion sense. This one to me looks like an intestinal tract. That is exactly right. I mean, <laughs> this is a much more optimistic thing. We, we, yeah, we're going down a hill, but at some point we're going to shoot back up and we're going to be able to figure it out. That's me at my most positive. <laughs> and then here are a bunch of balls going through some sort of intestinal whatnot and getting broken up and made smaller. This is me at my most honest. It's Mo Willems's poop artwork, which has <laughs> been a long time coming. When I walked in to see this exhibit, Gravity, this is the first one that jumped right out to me. It's got like a sort of a tealish green background and it's a bunch of interlocking shapes of all different sizes and greens and browns and yellows kind of meshed together in the middle in what looks like it could be some sort of food even. Uh, wow, uh, that's meal, interesting. But, yeah. I, you know, for me, it could be an island, it could be a city, mm -hmm. but this comes directly from some of the Beethoven-inspired abstractions that I did where these crystalline forms in the seventh symphony in the uh, second movement started to grow and take over the image. What I love about these is they're contemplative, you can get lost in them, and you feel figure out what it means. Like with my books, I'm only bringing 49% of the story. And if this is meaningful to you, it's because you helped give it meaning. And if this is, means nothing to you, it's because you didn't bother. Now, you mentioned the Beethoven situation in D.C. with the Kennedy Center, and you mentioned one of the movements. Maybe that pertains to the intestinal tract as well. <laughs> That's or also or a maybe movement. not. There's a movement of sorts there, too. But yeah. this does tie into your work at the Kennedy Center. Talk about how this show in Northampton ties into what you're doing in D.C. Well, you know, uh, I made these nine giant abstractions based on Beethoven's nine symphonies. And the idea was that we were going to perform all the symphonies and give prints of them to the audience. It was a very optimistic idea. It was very exciting. It was going to be Beethoven's 250th birthday. And then the pandemic started. So now it's two years later, mm -hmm. and the exhibit is up, but we're not able to perform all of the symphonies. Only some of the symphonies are being able to be performed. And having spent a year making abstractions, and then suddenly everything's stopping. For me, the making was my release during the beginning of the pandemic. The idea that I could go down to a studio and paint, and my editor said, just making these forms, there's something there. And then I made a book called Opposites Abstract over basically the first half of the first part of this 90-part series known as the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I think a lot of these paintings were made when I was like, ooh, you know, maybe things are going to get a little bit better. And I went back to primary colors and primary forms. I mean, not all of them are optimistic. I mean, this one is called California. And it looks like it's on fire. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of dark colors in here, too. And those are the ones, because being coming from sort of a goth background, that appeal to me, like, there's this very stark one, which is a black square with a black oval, a darker black oval in the midst of it. Right. And this actually is, uh, was when I was playing with the opposites abstract. Mm -hmm. The question is, is it dark? 
And so what is darkness and sort of black on black on black? Where, where do those lines end? And if you look at this later piece, which is kind of like a broken crystalline form, that is about seven or eight different colors of black and purple. Oh yeah, I see the purple all of a sudden. I didn't see it. And then when, if you look farther, you'll see that each one is a different color. But uh-huh. when you first see it, it all seems the same. Yeah. And I feel like those are the things that interest me. Because when we do see things, when we, our first impression sometimes doesn't have the depth that we need. Mm-hmm. And I love the idea that you would be like, oh yeah, it's just interesting black little shapes. And then stop and say, wait, how do they relate? to each other. What are the actual colors? What is behind the idea? Coming up more with Northampton's Mo Willems on what it's like jumping from some of the most iconic children's books of all time to making abstractions and how these abstractions on view and for sale in downtown Northampton are benefiting one of our favorite organizations. Here is an idea that's been really interesting to me. In my books, I'm seen as the funny guy. And then I make a book called Opposites Abstract. And there's some people who are like, well, I don't see an elephant or a pigeon in there. You know, what, what's going on? Um, Did you hide the pigeon in that one? They're in the text. There is a super hidden pigeon. There is a hidden pigeon in all your books. That is exactly right. <laughs> and so Opposites Abstract is the opposite of what you would expect from me. Mm-hmm. All of these abstractions are the opposite of what you would expect from me. Mm-hmm. And here's the idea. The kid at school who is called only the funny kid and wants to be somebody else, wants to contain multitudes, Mm -hmm. needs to be able to see that that's possible. The kid who's the jock who one day says, you know what, I wonder if I can try out for the play. Well, if the funny guy sometimes is serious and the silly guy sometimes is mysterious, then that means you can be more than one thing. Mm -hmm. And so behind all of these paintings, besides what they do for me, is this message, you contain multitudes, go out and try. I'm upstairs at the R. Michelson Gallery on Main Street in Northampton with Northampton's own Kennedy Center education artist in residence, Mo Willems. I love your use of of shapes, the basic shapes, circles right. and squares and triangles also play a major role in that. And well, all, of my, all of my books are very close to abstraction. I mean, the pigeon is just a bunch of circles. Yeah. And here... And a couple triangles. And a couple triangles. And a right. circle angle, and a word that <laughs> Mo Willems has coined that should hopefully someday get into the dictionary. I, well, you, you have contacts with yes, the dictionary. I'll talk to her about it. Yeah, you should, you should talk to people about that. I, you know, I have nobody with Webster. <laughs> Here's the thing. When I was doing the Beethoven research, I was researching Beethoven, I read this amazing thing. It said, you know what? Nobody gave Beethoven extra notes. He got the same notes we did. He just put them in a more interesting place, Mm -hmm. more interesting order. And I thought, you know what? Nobody's giving me extra shapes. So I go back to the basics. We all get the same shapes. We all get the same colors. It's what we do with them that is interesting. Mm You did come up with the circ angle, though. So you did get, yeah, you get that. You got that. Really got that one extra uh, asterisk circ angle. It's the right. pig, look at the pigeon's body next time you're looking at the pigeon. That's a circ angle. It's hard to explain. Uh, absolutely. Um, and look it up in the dictionary. Under circ angle should be a picture of the pigeon. When you look at this exhibit, which is hung while you're listening to this on the radio, but while we're here, it is not yet hung. Do the works feel done to you? Or do you ever feel like, I wish I had a brush because I would love to jump jump back in here again? No, I I feel like I'm visiting an old friend. I mean, Uh you sort of forget. And what's great about all exhibits is you're visiting your friend in their fancy gown. Yeah, right. Right? So to see that piece in a nice frame, (laughs) hanging up and see it in the scale and see them with their friends, it's like a really great prom for your efforts. For me, really, the most important thing is that I hope people like the stuff. I hope some people buy it because all of my proceeds are going to go to the food bank of uh, Western Mass. Heard of it. Right, exactly. (laughs) And so this is, I think, my sixth year of doing a benefit exhibit. But not everybody's going to be able to buy this stuff, and not everybody's going to love this stuff. But I hope that everybody who comes and sees this show is sparked and says, I can do that, and then they go out and they try. It can be intimidating when you see a fancy art gallery on Main Street to say, oh, I'm not, I don't belong there. You belong in here. Come on, they want you to come in. Come in, look at all the incredible stuff downstairs, and then come upstairs into the vault where we are right now and check out this. Particularly illustrators who have worked in children's books. What we want to do is connect and spark. Mm -hmm. So come, visit, see it, get sparked, make a connection. Mo Willems is Gravity. 
is up now at the R. Michelson Gallery on Main Street in Northampton, and all the proceeds going to benefit the Food Bank of Western Mass.